Okay, so today we are going to be looking at uh, chapter 11 of the book, uh, which is about uh, survivor analysis and sense of data. We look at uh, the chapter uh, last week and it was presented by uh, Umar uh, Durani. So today uh, we're going to be discussing about uh, the exercise uh, to the to the chapter and the uh, we'll be looking at uh, the solution already in which I think you shared this uh, solution in the in, in the flap card. So the first uh, question in the book uh, they were kind of like saying that for each for each example that we should state whether or not uh, the sensory mechanism is independent that uh, we have uh, to justify. Uh, our answer to uh, to the question. So the first question says, uh, in a study of disease relapse due to a careless research scientist, all patients whose phone numbers begin with a number two are lost uh, to, to follow up. So like they said, we should justify uh, our our answer, if this answer is independent uh, or not, so we can see that uh, in the in the in the book, this uh, the we can see that uh, the uh, the this is uh, this is independent because uh, there is no reasons uh, uh, to think disease relapse should be related to the first digit uh, of a of of the phone number. Okay, so but in the second part, they were they also asked uh, that in the study in a study of longevity, a formatting error causes all patients' ages that exceed ninety nine years to be lost. That is, we know that those patients are more than ninety nine years old, but we do not know their exact ages. So here we see that uh, this is not. This is not independent because uh, we because it's not independent because we do not know it's not independent because older patients are more likely to see a, an event than younger patients because as as we age something might occur because the older the age the patient can fall sick he can even die so they are more likely. Uh, to see any anything could happen at any time as, as the more we age. So that is not uh, that is not uh, independent. So the next question, which is one C, they say the hospital A conduct a study of longevity. However, very sick patients tend to be transferred to hospital B and are lost to and uh, they are being lost to follow up. So we can also see that. This also is uh, is not independent because sick patients are more likely to see an event than healthy patients. Because once we fall sick, anything could, could happen. Anything could happen. The person could uh, we we can lose uh, that person because sick patients are more likely to see an event than healthy person because someone that is healthy is sound, is fit. So there's. The deeper they said in a study of unemployment duration, the people who find work earlier are less motivated to stay in touch with study investigators and therefore are more likely to be lost uh, to follow up. So we can see that this is uh, not independent because more enjoyable in the world are more likely to see an event because. You can find yourself in a position today. Maybe you get a new job. You have been well paid. You, you can work in that position for quite a number of time. Then you can work, say, uh, you can get a new offer. So it's, there is more likely to see an event. You can, you can, there is what we call job churn. You can leave that for another, uh, for another job. So so that is what they say. They are more likely to see an event because you can leave that job for another position that is higher of a higher pay. So yeah, the way I interpreted that that, that, yes. that one was was um, this is only for people that don't have jobs currently, right? 
Yes, yes. So, so is it the same for people that have made no, more? No, this is this refers to people that have job because you know they they have job already. They are being paid. Maybe they can get another offer tomorrow of a that will be of a higher pay than what they are currently being paid. So there is a possibility that they can leave that for a, another job that is of a higher pay. So that is what uh, they were trying to say uh, in the book. So okay, if, maybe, maybe I misread it. It says uh, it says unemployment duration. So, so people that are unemployed and looking for for a job. No, they said. In the story of unemployment duration, people who find work earlier are less motivated. People who, that is, they find work earlier, they mm -hmm. are less motivated to stay in touch with investigators and therefore are right. more likely to be lost to follow up. So they, they find the work earlier, that is, they are in the job already. They are in the job already. They have, right. they are, they have, they, they are monthly income they receive every day. So there is a possibility that these same people, they can get, uh, let's say they can get a, another offer, maybe something that is of a higher pay. So there is a possibility they can leave this current job in which they are holding for a more lucrative, to secure a more lucrative uh, offer. So in the e parts they said, in a study of pregnancy duration, women who deliver their babies return are more likely to do so away from their away from their usual hospital, and thus are more likely to be censored relative to women to women who deliver full term uh, babies. So here we can see that this is also not independent because. Delivery away from hospital will be associated with pregnancy uh, duration. So it's, it's going to be associated with pregnancy duration. F said a researcher wishes to model the number of years of education of the residents of a small town. Residents who, who enrolled in college out of town are more likely to be lost to follow up and are also more likely to attend graduate school relative to those who attend college in town. So we also see that uh, in the answer that this is also not independent because years of education will be associated with enrolling out of town, uh, out of town uh, colleges. Okay, so the GPA, they said researchers conduct a study of disease-free survivor. That is time until disease relapse following treatment. Patients who have not relapsed within five years as considered to be cured, and thus their survival time uh, is censored at five years. So here we see that in order, here we see that that all event happens within five years. So censoring after time is equivalent to not censoring at all. So the censoring is going to be independent uh, in that case. So, what we have, so the ish, they said we wish uh, to model the failure time for some electrical components. These components can be manufactured in Iowa or in Pittsburgh with no difference in quality. The Iowa factory opened five years ago and so component manufactured in Iowa are censored at five years. The peace box factory opened two years ago. So those components are censored at two years. If there is no difference, we see that if there is no difference in quality, then location and therefore censoring is independent of uh, the failure of the failure times. So the last question, one I says, we wish to model the failure time of an electrical component made in two different factories. 
one of which opened before the other. We have reasons to, to believe that the component manufactured in the factory that opened earlier are of higher quality. So yeah, they do say that in this case, uh, the difference in opening times of the two location will mean that any difference in quality look between location will be associated with uh, censoring. So censoring in this case is not independent. Okay, so question two, he said we should conduct a survey that has to do with four participants who just purchased cell phones in order to model the time until phone replacement. Okay, so the first participant replaces a phone after one point, one year and two months. Okay, the second participant still has not replaced her phone at the end of the two year study period. The third participant changes a phone number and is lost to follow up, but has not yet replaced her phone. 1.5 years into the story, the fourth participant replaces a phone after 0 0.2 years. Here for each four participants. So we have I, which is one to four because we have four participants in this study. And we answer the following question using the notation in section 11.1 .1 of the book. So they say A, is the participant cell phone replace time sensor? Okay, okay, so here we can see that censoring occurs when we do not know when the phone was replaced. Okay, since we do not know when this cell phone will be replaced. So in that case, we can see that censoring is going to be occurred. So in this case, the first participant, we have no censoring. The second participant, since we know when it, we have yes, there will be censoring. The third participant, we have yes, there will be censoring. And the last participant, there will be uh, no uh, censoring. So 2B says, is the value of CI known? And if so, then what is it? So here we see that CI is a censoring time for the four participants. These are because the first participants, we don't know when this censoring is going to occur. So there we have NA because we don't know when. The second participants, we have two, okay? The third participant is between 1.5 years, one, five, one year and five months. The last participant, we don't know when censoring is going to occur. So there we have NA for the last. So C said, is the value of TI known? And if so, then what is this? So here we see that TI is a time to the events for the four participants. These are 1.2, the first events happen in what? One year and two months. The second, we, we don't know the time to the events. The third, we don't know the time to the events. And the last, we have 0 0.2. Okay. So D says, is the value of YI known? And if so, then what is it? So here we see that YI is the observed time for the four participants, the observed time for the four participants. And these are 1.2 to 1.5 and 0 0.2, just as we see so in the text above. So E, they say is the value of epsilon one known, and if so, then what is it? So we can see that the epsilon sign is an indicator for censoring. That is the nomenclature introduced here defines this to be one, if we observe true survival time. And we also have zero if we observe the sensor time. Therefore, for this participant, the values are one, zero, zero, and also uh, and also one. Okay, so question three in the book. Question three is about uh, 
for the following example in exercise two. They say we should report the values of k d1 to dk, r1 to rk, and also q1 to qk, where this notation was defined in section 11.3. So here we can see that k is a number of unique deaths, which is, in our own case, it is two. There is a number of unique deaths is two. Then we have, we have dk, which represent the unique death times, which are 0 0.2 and also one year and two months. Okay, we also have RK, which denotes the number of patients alive and in the study just before DK. Note the first events for patient four, then patient one, and then patient three is sensor. And finally, the study ends with patient two still involved. Therefore, RK takes the value of four, three. Why QK? You know the number of patients who died at time DK, therefore it takes the value of one and one. So these are all the information in which uh, we then then only get use uh, the survivor uh, package in order for them uh, to verify. So they have to load the library. So they they just uh, create a, a survivor event. Then these are the events. Then they look at uh, the summary and. They just use the survivor package to pull out uh, the information which we have already defined here because we said the, the number of unique de uh, death times is 0 0.2 and 1.2. So we can check for the number of unique death times is 0 0.2 and 1.2. So they just use the survivor package uh, to pull out those uh, information out. Okay, so I don't know if there are any questions uh, before or... No, yeah, sounds good. Okay, thank you. So, so question four, you said this problem makes use of the kaplan May survivor curve displayed in figure 11.9. And the raw data that went into plotting this survivor curve is given in table 11.4 of our of the chapter. Then the covariate column of that table is not needed for this problem. So A, they say, what is the probab estimated probability of survival past 50 days? Okay, so here we see that there are two events that happen before, before 50 days. First, the first event, the number at risk, which is RK, are given uh, five and four. One was censored and early on, the survival probability is going to be what? Four divided by five times three divided by four. So the survival probability is uh, zero, is 0 0.6, which in this case, they, they also use uh, uh, the survival package uh, to derive to derive uh, their uh, to derive uh, their answer, where they use the tidy verse, they create a, a triple, which is where we have y, we have d and x. Then they create a function, the soft function. They pass in the, the rest, the varied table data rest y, then table data, then 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 the derive uh, the form the summary from the object in which uh, we created here we have x okay explain by one I think one is gonna be like the intercept okay so once they look at the summary which uh, gave us uh, this 0.6 But how do they arrive at 0 0.6 from the triple is what I'm confused. 
Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> the probability is 0 0.6. So the B part, they say write out an analytical expression for the estimated uh, survival function. For instance, your answer might be something along the lines where we have ST, which is equals to uh, zero, when we have 0 0.8, that means if the time to the event is less than 31, less than 31, okay? But when we have this equals to 0 0.5, that means if 31 is less than or equals to the time to that event to occur, and also it's less than 77, okay? Otherwise, if it is 0 0.22, except that means if 77, okay, is less than or equals to the time to the events, okay? But in this case, we see that the, this, based on, uh, based on the solution I discovered uh, that the, the, the author commented that uh, the, the previous illustration that is this is actually uh, is actually uh, not uh, correct because we're supposed to have s prime of t which is equals uh, when it's equals to one which is hundred percent that is if the time to the event is less than twenty six point five because the time to that events to occur is less than 26.5. But when we have 80%, okay, that means we that means if 26.5 is less than or equals to the time to the event, and also is less than 37.2. So when we have 0 0.6, that means if 37.2 is less than or equals to the time also less than 57.3. But when we have 0 0.4, which is like 40%, that means 57, if 57.3 is less than or equals uh, to the time of the events. So in, in question, uh, question five, they said that we should sketch the survival function given by the equation, okay? They said our, our answer must look something like figure 11.9 that we, that is in the book. So here we can, here they draw, uh, they draw, uh, they, they sketch the function using the plot function from, from this R whereby they specify the X limit, they specify the Y limit, they, they put the, the Y axis label, the X axis label, and they draw the curve using uh, this base function. So once they draw, so they have time in this, in the X axis, we also have the estimated probability of survival. We can see at zero, time, so we have 80% as survival, but as it still remains, so as we get to close to around 50, uh, this uh, we have around, around close to 50% as survival, so that is how the curve keep on uh, declining over time. So in question six, they said this problem makes use of the data displayed in figure 11.1 in completing this problem. We can refer to the observation times as Y1 to, to Y4. The ordering of these observation times can be seen from figure 11.1 and the exact value are not uh, required. So A, they said we should report the values of X delta one to delta four. We also have K. We also have D one to D K. We also have R one to R K, and also Q one to Q K. The equivalent notation defined in section uh, eleven point one and eleven 
point three, we have already seen all those notation. I think we have already uh, seen all those notation here when we were looking at a uh, question, when we are looking at uh, question three. So what uh, they did there, they said that the delta values are bit one, zero, one and zero. Okay. Okay, y k is two, d value is y3 and y1, and r values are four and two, q values are one and one. So the b, they were saying that we should sketch the Kaplan mass survivor curve corresponding to these data sets. So, and in order for them to do that, they, they still use uh, the base uh, R plot function. Okay, so and they use the lines uh, to draw, to draw, to fit the line into, into the Kappa Ma survivor function. I think uh, that resulted uh, to this uh, uh, visualization, which we are seeing where we have the time in this, in the x axis, and we have the estimated probability of a uh, survivor in the y, in the y axis. So here we have this on the survivor curve estimated in B. They were like saying, what is the probability that the event occurs within 200 days? What is the probability that the event does not occur within 310 days, okay? So probability of event occurring between within 200 and within 310 days. So within 200 days, so the estimated probability is 0 0.25. And within 310 days, the estimated probability is 0 0.375. So they now say we should write out an expression for the estimated probability curve from B. So we should write an expression. So let's, let's give this whereby, whereby when S prime of T is equals uh, to one. So if T is less than y3. So when s of t is equals to 0 0.75, if y3 is less than or equals to t, less than or equals to y1. But when it's equals to 0 0.375, if y1 is less than or equals to, is less than or equals uh, to t. Yeah. Which um, seven is it in this uh, problem? We should derive 11.5 and 11.6, which are needed for the construction of the wrong log rank test statistics. And that we should recall the notation in table 11.1. .1. So here we assume that there is no difference between the survivor function of the two groups. Then we can think of Q1K as a number of failures if we draw this curve. So yeah, what are we doing this? They were saying that the hyper geometric distribution models sampling without replacement from a finite pool where each sample is a success or failure. So this fits the situation here, where the we have a finite number of samples in the RIGS uh, sets. So though I tried, I tried to look at this, I tried to look at this, okay. Here we have mapping to our situation where we have Q1 of K is K, R1 of K is N, and RK is N, and QK is K. I try to look at this. 
but I, I'll feel comfy because I am not from <laughs> a statistics <laughs> background. I'm an agronomy, so I, I was trying to wrap my head, but still not sinking. So, so my apologies. So, so BIPA, they say, given your previous answer and the properties of the hypergeometric distribution, what are the main and variants of Q1 of K? And we should compare it with what we have in 11.5 and 11.6. So they say with the above parameterizations, the mean, okay, of this and this, and the variance, the variance of N of K all over N into what? N minus K all over N into N minus N all of is, is given by this equation. And they said this are equivalent to what we have in 11.5 and 11.6 uh, of the book. So question eight, which says that we should recall that the survival function S of T, the hazard function H of T, and the density function F of T are defined in 11.2, 11 11.9, 11 and 11.11 11 respectively. Furthermore, we define F of T, which is equals to one minus S of into T, and we show that the following relationship hold, this following relationship hold, okay? S of T exponential one. Uh, uh, this is a derivative function, I think I am correct, where we have the base is zero, the power of T, where we have H in, into U of du, so here we, we know that if f of t is equals to one minus s, in, s into t, then f of t is a cumulative density function for t. So for a continuous distribution, a cumulative density function example f of t can be expressed as an integral up to some value of x of the probability density uh, function, okay? Well, we have this, okay? Equivalently, the derivative of the cumulative density function is its probability density function, which is uh, given by this. Uh, then H of T is also given as this from the basic calculus. This can be rewritten as H of T, which is equals to d all over dt log of st integrating then exponentiating we get the second uh, we get the second uh, identity so question 9 he said in this exercise we will explore the consequences of assuming that the survival times follow an exponential distribution. A, it says suppose that the survival times follows an exponential lambda distribution so that its density function is given as this, using the relationship provided in exercise eight, we should show that S of T is equals to exponential minus lambda of T. So here we see that the CDF, which is the cumulative density function of an exponential distribution is one minus exponential minus lambda of X and S of S into T is one minus F of T, where F of T, where F of T, where f of t is the CDF, is the cumulative uh, density uh, function. Hence, s of t is equals to exponential minus lambda of uh, lambda, lambda t. Okay, so now b, it says suppose that each of n independent survivor 
times follows an exponential lambda distribution, exponential and the exponential distribution, write out the expression of the likelihood function. So we should write out an expression of the likelihood function. So that here we have the reference to 11 point, which give us the following formula, okay? And 11.10 give us uh, this other formula, H of T, okay? And plugging in the expression from part A, we get, we get this other uh, equation, which is H of T, lambda of exponential minus lambda of T, exponential minus lambda times T, which is equals uh, to lambda, which is equals to lambda. Okay, so using 11.13, we get the following loss expression, which is, we get the following loss e expression. So now see, we show that the maximum likely estimator for lambda is this equation. So taking the log likelihood, so we take the log likelihood from both sides. So we add a log a logarithm function. So we now arrive at this other equation. Okay. Then we now apply the differentiating, differentiating this expression with respect to lambda. With respect to lambda, we get, we get, uh, we get, we get this. So now. Uh, this function maximizes when its gradient uh, is zero. And for this gives a MLE of lambda equals this. So D, use your answer in C to derive the derive an estimator of, a, of the main survivor, the main survivor time. So hint for D, recall that the mean of an ex exponential lambda random variable is one all over lambda. So estimated mean survival will be one over lambda, which gives the gives the above will be this, where we have Y one all over summation, where we have where we have Delta I, which can be thought of as the total uh, total observation time over the total number over over it the total number of deaths. Okay, so I think uh, those parts <laughs> because to me it looks <laughs> a bit technical to me. I am not coming uh, from. I don't have background in statistics. I only do. Uh, apply the knowledge of I gain in statistics to do my own research. <laughs> yeah, that's that's some pretty tough formulas. <laughs> so now I'm going to the applied question for uh, which is uh, question ten. They said this uh, exercise focus on the brain tumor data, which is included in the ISLR two R library. A. They say we should plot. We should plot the kaplan mean survival curve with plus or minus standard error bands using the soft fit function in the survivor package, okay? So here we load, they loaded the library, okay? They use the soft function from the survivor package. So here they have the brain cancer, dollars and time, where they have time. Then we have brain cancer against status. So they use the plot function, okay? Where we have X, they'll, they'll explain by nothing where we have one. So they just, the X axis label, the Y axis label, the color should be still view. The confidence interval is set to 0 0.67. So this, this is it. So we have the survivor curve and we have the confidence interval which we specify as 0.67. So they now draw a bootstrap sample of N, which is 88 from the pair and compute the resulting Kappa 
survivor cough. That we should repeat this process where B is equal to 200 times. We should use the result to obtain an estimate of the standard error of the Kaplan mare survivor cough at each time point. We should compare this to the standard error obtained in A. So we use the plot function. Here we fit the model. We create a new table. Okay. We use a we are they use a for loop here to fit uh, the model. And finally, uh, finally they got the graph. They got the visualization here, which shows the estimated probability of survival. And we also have months in X axis. Then we can see that the curve that over time, over time, that the estimated probability from the zero, I think it was 100%, we see that it begins to, it declines uh, all over time. But when we get here, it begins uh, to be, be uh, stabilized. See, they say fit a Cox proportional hazard models that uses all of the predictors to predict survival. We should summarize the main findings. So here we are fitting the model using the Cox pH function from the soft package. So we they fit the model. Here they are using all, I think all the traits that are, is brain cancer. So they got the fit, okay? Uh, here we can see that diagnose HD and KI are highly, they are highly, they are highly, they are highly significant because why we have we can see their P values. Mm -hmm. So D, they say we should stratify the data by the value of KI. Since only one observation has KI is equals to 40. You can group that observation together with the observation that have KI is equal to 60. Then we should plot the Kaplan mare survivor curve for each of the five strata as just said for the other predictors. So to adjust for other predictors, we fit a model that includes those predictors and use this model to predict new artificial data where we allow KI to take each possible value but set the other predictors to be the more or mean, to be the mode or mean of the of the other predictors. So they use library GG45. So the model data, so they create a, a data frame where they specify the sex should be female, which is repeated five times, diagnostic, meningioma, then replication, which is supratentorial, then KI, GTV, and stereoid. Okay. They use the soft plot, soft fit function. They plot, they make the they generate the plots and they fit the at the legend to the bottom left. So here they were using the base uh, R function. So we can see the survival probability. We can see the time, which is in months. Yeah, yeah, we are having 60, we have 70, we have 80, we have 90, and we have we have 100 so that we can be able to differentiate uh, them in the plots. Okay, so question 11, they said this example make use of the data in, in table. 11.4. A, they say we should create two groups of observation in group one, where X is less than two, whereas in group two, where X is greater than or equals to two, we should plot the kaplan mayer survivor curves corresponding to the two groups. Be sure to label the curves so that it is clear which curve corresponds to which group by I? Does there appear to be a difference between the two groups survivor curve? X, so we were using 
the same uh, function from the package, which is a soft. Okay, then we are plotting, then we add the lines, we add the second line, and we put uh, the legend. Okay, so we want to see if there is a difference uh, between two groups here we're having x is greater than or, or equals to two, this one is less than two. So we can see that uh, there seems to be no difference uh, between the two groups because we can see from here, they almost have overlap. We can see that uh, there, is, uh, there is no much difference uh, between the two groups I, when we have less than or equals to two or rather we have uh, less than two. So the last of B, they say we should fit Cox proportional hazard model using the group mm -hmm. indicator as a covariate. What is the estimated coefficient that we should write a sentence providing the interpretation of this coefficient in terms of the hazards or the instantaneous probability of the event? Is there evidence that the true coefficient value is non-zero? Okay. So we fit our model and we have a output from the model, uh, which is this. Okay. So here we see that the coefficient is 0 0.3401. And this implies a slightly increased, this implies a slightly increased hazard when x is less than two, but it is not significantly different to zero because the p-value is uh, the p-value is zero point eight. Okay, so the SIP it says recall, we should recall from section eleven point five point two that in the in the case of a single binary covariance. The log rank test statistic should be identical to the score statistics for the Cox model. That we should conduct a log rank test to determine whether there is a difference between the survivor curve for the two groups. How does the p values for the log rank test statistics compare to the p values for the score statistics for the Cox model from B? So here we have the summary. Okay. Here we have the test, we have the degree of freedom, we have the p-value. So we fitted uh, the model, we got up then the, the chi-square, which is 0 0.07. So here we can say that the two groups, uh, that they are, they, are, uh, they are identical. Okay, I think, uh, I think uh, that is that is all. I think the material you shared was really helpful because we will have struggled all through <laughs> the chapter. <laughs> I think that is all I got from the book. I don't know if you have uh, any comments or contribution. Uh, no, I think you covered it well. Um, I, I've not used this, you know, in practice, but. Um... I mean, it's good to know some of the theory behind it. Yes. Um, I can definitely see some use cases, um, but it seems like it's a bit more, you know, it's not as straightforward as, as yes. a linear model or something, you know? Yeah. There's more to it. Thank you very much for joining. So, 